This goofy looking two-tone desktop PC is my HP Kayak. It's a dual Pentium 3 workstation from 1999. And today, thanks to an incredibly lightweight modern Linux distro called MX Linux, we're gonna see if we can do modern computer things with this 26 year old beast of a workstation. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy taking comically old computers and modern Linux, and uh, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. The last time we played around with MX Linux, we installed it on a Pentium 4 IBM with great success. We even hilariously joined a Zoom call with it. Barely. But MX Linux is basically magic, and it can run on far older machines than that. So we're stepping back a generation to this, which is older than some of you watching this video. But I do have high hopes of success here because this thing does have something going for it. Dual Pentium 3 processors. Plus I was able to scrounge up more of the super weird RAM this thing takes. And we're gonna use some goofball shenanigans to cheese a much newer video card into it. All right, let's see if I can open this case without breaking it or injuring myself. Oh my God, I hate it. Come on. Ah, hey, it didn't stab me that time. All right, so we're gonna have to make a couple changes here to give MX Linux a fighting chance. We have an SSD already that has Windows 2000. We'll just install over that, that's fine. I think we should switch out this AGP video card. I have no idea how much memory this is, but I'm gonna say even Fluxbox is gonna have trouble with that. Let's also pop out some of this goofy RD RAM. It came with 228 meg modules. I was able to scrounge up these 256 meg modules for a whopping 512 megs of RAM. I'm sure that'll be fine. We're also gonna need a different optical drive. This one is a CD-ROM and MX Linux comes on a DVD. All right, let's find some janky solutions. For optical drive, we've got a DVD RW out of a Mac Pro. Of course, this is SATA, so we'll need to convert that to IDE. And I still haven't found a decent AGP video card, but what I do have is this PCIe to PCI adapter and this lovely AGP Fire Pro Graphics V5800. Does this fit? Oh yeah, oh, that's real stupid. <laughs> Just add in this lovely DVI capable ISO monitor and the stupidest keyboard I own. I think we're in business. All right, let's try to install modern Linux on this thing. Right after this quick word about today's sponsor, NordPass. You know what I love? Using the same password for everything. Hello? No, I didn't buy 15 Lamborghinis. Today's internet is a weird, gross, and dangerous place. So using a password manager is critical. Created by the same group of computer boffins behind the incredibly popular NordVPN, using NordPass is just as easy as using FluffyKitty123 as your password for everything, but carries the security of using strong, secure, and unique passwords for every site and service you use. That's because NordPass generates strong passwords automatically, and you don't have to remember them. Basically, it just works without you even having to think about it. NordPass uses the hilariously named XChaCha20 encryption algorithm and zero knowledge architecture. Plus, NordPass is more than just managing passwords, stores sensitive information like credit card details and, well, anything else you don't want prying eyes to get a hold of. And get notified about breaches and personal data that might be circulating on the dark web. I've used a password manager for many years and it's absolutely integral to my digital life and business. And you should too. So go to nordpass.com slash action retro and use code action retro for a free 14 day trial of NordPass business or 20% off. And they don't even require a credit card for the trial. Again, that's nordpass.com slash action retro code action retro. And now back to the kayak. All right. My two biggest concerns here, is this janky video card gonna work? And also I have no idea if that memory I bought on eBay works. So let's find out both things at the same time. So far not promising. 
We have a red light <laughs> on here. All right, the fan is spinning on the video card. Well, I was just an idiot and uh, accidentally knocked the goofy Ram Terminator module out. But after popping that back in place, hey, it's booting. Oh, it works, look at that. We are booted into the MX Linux live environment. We can test if everything works and see if we need any weird parameters to get this to boot. But let's just try this as default. And after about 10 solid minutes, we are finally into a desktop. It's fairly responsive. Obligatory fast fetch screenshot. And yeah, check it out. It sees everything. We're running Linux kernel 6.1 on our dual Pentium 3 copper mines at 0.8 gigahertz. Excellent. Oh uh, yeah, CPU at 100%, just the way we like to see it. All right, let's do an install. All right, use the entire disk. Computer name will be Kayak. Default user with an extremely secure password. That is not just the word action. Same for the root account. All right, this install seems to be going just fine. Hopefully jump cut to successfully installed. Okay, well I came back after about an hour and for some reason, the computer is logged out of the desktop session. It didn't restart because this still says demo, so we're definitely still in the live environment. I can only assume that something has gone horribly wrong. So at the startup screen here, I'm gonna choose F6 for fail safe and choose fail safe. That should boot us up into a strictly text-based environment. And we'll just log in here as root and pop into the CLI installer. All right, we'll use the whole disk, SDA one, separate home partition, nope, and yes. All right, we're installing at five megabytes per second. Boy, that's gonna take a while. All right, I've added my user accounts and it's prompting me to reboot. I think we're installed. Well, I have literally never seen this error message before. Attempt to read or write outside of disk HD zero and we are in grub rescue. Hmm. Okay, so I've had a quick think about this and I have an idea. I'm stopping the installer here at repartition the disks. I'm gonna delete what's on there and uh, what I'm gonna try is shrinking down the boot partition because I got to thinking, maybe this 1999 computer doesn't like a 250 gigabyte boot partition. I have run into that on old Macs before. So let's do a 40 gigabyte boot partition. This thing came originally with a 10 gig hard drive. So maybe 40 gigs will be just fine. I'm gonna give this an eight gigabyte swap partition and the rest of this for a home partition. Bootable flag on SDA one, change the type of the second partition to swap. Write this and the root partition SDA one. So the operating system will be installed on the 40 gig SDA one partition, swap partition in the middle, eight gigs, and hopefully home partition will work as the rest of the drive. Do I want to use a separate home partition? I do, it is SDA three. All right, MX Linux will be copied to SDA one. All right, once again, installing grub to the MBR. Rebooting and fingers crossed. Oh yeah, that worked. We are booting. All right, we have successfully booted into our fresh install of MX Linux. And that is significantly faster to boot than the live environment and significantly more smooth. Although that is a little concerning. Let's pop open a terminal. 
Do we have H top? We do. Not showing any swap, so we'll have to set up swap. All right, there's our UUID. We will need that. All right, we now have eight gigs of swap. I'll just add that to F stab. So we will have swap on next boot. And that gives us almost as good as another eight gigs of RAM. In addition to our 512 megs of actual RAM. Being that this is Debian based, we do have apt enabled. So sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade. Let's see how long that's gonna take. Well, that took forever to update, but hey, seems to have solved the weird graphical glitches. Totally worth it. I doubt Firefox is going to work because the Pentium 3 does not support SSE2. Yep, illegal instruction. We will need to install a different browser. Oh yeah, Dillo works just fine. Netsurf being a bit more of a modern web browser which should give us a bit more of a modern experience. Turn on JavaScript, oh, come on. All right, let's try the Falcon web browser, which is, well, basically Chromium without all the googly stuff. Segmentation fault. So it seems like NetSurf is our best option and really a perfectly good option for a low spec machine like this. All right, I'm curious if this thing can read a USB stick not sure what kind of USB this has, probably 1.0 or 1.1. Oh look, there it is! Sweet! And on here I have an ancient version of Zoom, which is the last version that ran on a Pentium 4, and no, illegal instruction. Alright, let's try Sauerbraten, which is my favorite classic open source FPS, and also has some of the best music in any video game ever. All right, well, it's not looking good for Sauerbrot neither. <laughs> okay, so I think this build raises kind of an existential question. Just because you can get modern Linux to run on something really, really ridiculously old, is there really any point to it? I mean, MX Linux itself and Fluxbox, the desktop environment, runs surprisingly well here, but getting any sort of other modern software to run is a big problem because the Pentium 3s are just too old. They don't support the actual instructions that newer software needs. It's kind of a tough question, but I guess it comes down to whether you're looking for the end result or whether you find meaning in the journey itself. Because for me, the best part of getting Linux to run on wacky old hardware is getting Linux to run on wacky old hardware. In any event, that'll do it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more weird stuff like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And I just want to give a very special thank you to all of my Patreon supporters and channel members. Thank you so much, each and every one of you, for supporting me and supporting this channel and all the weird stuff I do. I am so very grateful and I just could not do this without you.